Hello everyone, welcome to General Sciences Biology Module 10. Today's lesson is on lipids, fats and cholesterol. My name is Ritrisha. I'm from GK Today. I'll be taking you through this. First, we come to lipids and fats. So what are lipids? Lipids refer to a group of molecules comprising of fats, oils, phospholipids, waxes and steroids. All lipids are hydrophobic, that is they don't dissolve in water. However, they dissolve in organic solvents. The backbone of all lipid compounds is glycerol and glycerin. Glycerol is a sugar alcohol made of a linear chain of three carbon atoms and three hydroxyl atoms. It is soluble in water. What are the differences between hydrophobic and hydrophilic molecules? So water is a polar substance as we know and the rule of thumb is that equal dissolves equal. Meaning uh, non-polar substances dissolve in non-polar liquids whereas polar substances dissolve in polar liquids. Now coming to differences between hydrophobic and hydrophilic molecules. Hydro means water, phobic means fear. So hydrophobic molecules don't dissolve in water. Whereas philia means friendship. So hydrophilic molecules dissolve in water. Hydrophobic substances are non-polar molecules. Hydrophilic are polar. Examples of hydrophobic molecules would be fats and oils. Lipids in general are molecules with a large nonpolar extension, which makes them soluble in nonpolar solvents such as benzene, ether, and chloroform. There exist some amphipathic lipids, an example of which is phospholipid, which are soluble in both water and organic solvents. What are fats? The fats is a group of uh, <clears throat> biomolecules which are triglycerides made of three molecules of fatty acids bound to one molecule of glycerol. So fats are also known as triesters of glycerol. Fats are not soluble in water, but they are soluble in organic solvents. What are phospholipids? Phospholipids are molecules made up of one molecule of glycerol bound to two molecules of fatty acids and also one phosphate group. They are the main components of cell membranes. And they are also amphipathic molecules, meaning they have a non-polar portion due to the long fatty acid chains and a polar portion due to the phosphate group. So they dissolve in both water and organic solvents. What are steroids? Steroids are another class of lipids which have a unique chemical structure. They are built from four carbon-laden fused ring structures. Bile salts, cholesterol, the sexual hormones estrogen, progesterone and testosterone, corticosteroids and pro-vitamin D are examples of steroids. What is the difference between saturated and unsaturated fats? So saturated fats, in them the carbon molecule is bound to as many hydrogen molecules as possible. In unsaturated fats, double and triple carbon to carbon bonds are found and thus there is a possibility of adding few more hydrogen atoms. Thus all carbon to carbon bonds in saturated fats are single bonds. Whereas in unsaturated fats uh, are liquid in room temperature, saturated are usually solids. There are no double or triple bonds in saturated fats. Uh, in unsaturated fats, if there are more than carbon-carbon double or triple bonds present, such fat is called a polyunsaturated fatty acid or PUFA. Now, examples of saturated fat are ghee, cream, cheese, butter, etc. Examples of PUFA include palmitolic acid, oleic acid, meristolic acid, linoleic acid and archidonic acid. What is hydrogenation? So the unsaturated fatty acids have double bonds and therefore have fewer hydrogen atoms than maximum number possible. The process of hydrogenation can con convert an unsaturated fat into saturated fat by adding those extra hydrogen atoms. Thus hydrogenation converts liquid vegetable oils into solid or semi-solid fats. So in industries, this is achieved by the presence of some catalysts such as nickel, palladium or platinum metals. This method has prevented oxidation and thus rancidity and has allowed for the development of foods with less animal and saturated fats. However, the consumption of hydrogenated fatty acids increases the risk of heart disease. This is because the fats cause a change in the structure of targeted unsaturated fatty acids. 
majority but not all double or triple bonds bro are broken during hydrogenation of unsaturated fats hydrogenation may also result in creation of unsaturated fats with peculiar hydrogen atom arrangement called trans fats what is the difference between cis fats and trans fats so cis and trans are terms that refer to the arrangement of two hydrogen atoms bonded to the carbon atoms involved in a double bond in unsaturated fats saturated fats don't have this concept because they only have single bonds so in cis arrangement the hydrogen atoms are on the same side of the double bond and these are the most naturally occurring fats in trans arrangement the hydrogens are on the opposite side of the double bond only a handful of naturally occurring fats are trans fats such as uh, the ones found in milk and body fat of ruminants such as cattle and sheep trans fats are generated during hydrogenation processing of polyunsaturated fatty acids in food production their outcome of partial hydrogenation and not complete hydrogenation because complete hydrogenation would end the double bonds now what is partial hydrogenation the process of hydrogenation adds hydrogen atoms to unsaturated fats eliminating double bonds and making them into partially or completely saturated fats however partial hydrogenation if it is a chemical uh, reaction rather than enzymatic converts a part of the cis isomers into trans unsaturated fats instead of hydrogenating them completely what are good fats and bad fats one thing that should be clear by now is that no fats are bad as fats are excellent sources of energy and help to maintain the health of the body however fat if it's taken too much is bad there are several fats that are considered essential such as omega 6 and omega 3 fatty acids or these are substances that our body requires but cannot produce these are considered to be good fats comparatively the fats we don't need to ingest are often dubbed as bad fats how does fat help maintain internal body temperature so fats are poor heat conductors so they form thick layers of fatty tissues also called adipose tissue then accumulated in an organism this is the reason that they serve as good thermal insulators in cold climate fauna such as polar bears seals and whales adipose tissue helps them maintain their internal body temperature how do fats help us in gaining energy so carbohydrates are the main energy sources for us however when carbohydrates are not present or uh, they are not sufficient the body can use lipid and also proteins to break them and get energy now we come to cholesterol what is cholesterol and why is it important cholesterol refers to a subclass of lipids known as steroids cholesterol is also the molecule from which steroid hormones and bile acids are built so what is its importance cholesterol is a steroid of fat used to maintain the strength permeability and flexibility of cell membranes it also serves as a precursor for the biosynthesis of sex hormones bile acids and vitamin d what are some sources of cholesterol cholesterol is predominantly synthesized in our body by the liver and it also it's also present in food food also supplements cholesterol all food containing animal fat contains cholesterol to some varying extent major dietary sources of cholesterol include cheese egg yolk beef pork poultry fish and shrimp cholesterol is not found in significant amounts in plant sources however ingested cholesterol is esterified that is it is poorly absorbed this is the reason that uh, cholesterol in food has little effect on our body or the concentration of cholesterol in the blood in our body liver secretes it in non esterified form via bile into the digestive tract typically about 50% of the excreted cholesterol is reabsorbed by the small intestine back into the blood stream how is cholesterol transported within our body and what are the lipoproteins cholesterol is only slightly soluble in water it can dissolve and travel in the water based blood stream at, at exceedingly small concentration since cholesterol is insoluble in blood it is transported in the circulatory system within the lipoproteins there are several type of lipoproteins in blood in order of increasing density chylomicrons the 
different intensities are very low density lipoprotein or VLDL, intermediate density lipoprotein or IDL, low density lipoprotein or LDL, and high density lipoprotein or HDL. More lipids and less protein a lipoprotein has, the less densities. How can cholesterol be controlled? Statins are a group of drugs that work to lower cholesterol levels, particularly the bad cholesterol. They are low density lipoproteins known as LDL. The drugs work in two ways. First, they block an enzyme that is needed for cholesterol production. Second, they increase LDL membrane receptors in the liver. That's all for today's tutorial. If you like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel GK Today. Until the next tutorial, goodbye.